Hey guys, welcome to another Heavy House tutorial. Today we're going to be making a proximal shader with Cycles 4D. First thing we're going to do is going to add in two planes and we're going to set one of those to Z plus and then we're going to add a sphere into our scene. So what we're setting up now is really just so I can demonstrate how the proximal shader is built and then in a little bit I will show you a couple of examples of how you can use it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, go down to Cycles 4D, create new surface, uh, emission, and we're going to drop that onto the planes. Actually, let's group these planes together into a null using option G. Okay. So let's go in and check this out. So we're going to add in, um, I'm going to show you some things that are not going to work and then the reasons why and then things that work better. So first we're going to add in a texture coordinate node and then a mapping node. And then out of the mapping node we are going to put a gradient texture. Gradient texture is going to be changed to spherical. Plug the vector in, uh, we're going to choose object, and then plug that in. And you see we have a uh, gradient right there in the center. And that's being based off of the position of the null object, which is at world zero. Um, obviously, if we move this sphere, nothing's linked to it, so it's not going to change anything. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to drive that gradient fall off with the position of the sphere. So what you can do in the mapping node is right here it says uh, on the right it says mapping from object. You can grab your sphere and drop it in there. And you know on initial look you think that's okay that's gonna work but notice if I drag up my uh, texture is actually going down. If I drag down my sphere my uh, gradient is going up. Um, so we need to fix that. So in order to fix that, we will do a uh, separate XYZ and then a combine XYZ and go ahead and just plug those across. And since it's doing the opposite of what we would like, we're going to take a math node we're going to set it to multiply. We're going to plug our Y into there. And then to get it to be inverted, we're going to change our second value to negative 1. So now, if I drag up, go across, forward, you know, we're that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, in here, we can throw in one of the uh, my uniform scale nodes and then you can control how large that fall off is um, after the gradient texture you could throw a color ramp and then really kind of crunch this down to something like a really tight fall off okay so all those will work um, now let's talk about why maybe we shouldn't use the object mode so right now what this is doing is it's taking the, uh, it's looking at the uh, null as and using its information. So, and then over here in the mapping node, we are t telling it to look at the sphere's world position. Okay, so if we take the null and move it around, uh, which has our two planes in it, you're going to notice that that texture actually follows it because the sphere is at zero zero and the uh, planes are that texture is following them at zero zero so in order to fix that we're going to delete this texture coordinate and we're going to bring in a geometry and we're going to pipe in the position that position is now referencing both of them from world space so you could take now the planes and you can rotate them around you can move it up 
and it's you notice that the gradient is staying in the exact same place the whole time. So that's how you want to build it. Uh, that's new to me. I kind of just figured that out the other day. So uh, that's how I'd set this up. And then uh, one other thing is if here in the mapping node we're in texture mode. Well, uh, if you needed to do something in point mode for whatever reason, you can see that if I move this sphere around, it's going now it's going the opposite in the uh, left and right. And let's get rid of our separate X, Y, Z, that reorient. Okay, so if I drag up and down, it, it works. Remember, we're bypassing these right now. But if I go X and Z, it's reversed. So then in order to fix that, if you're using point mode, you would do this exact same thing with the X, uh, what we did with the Y, which is multiply by negative one. You would do that to the X and Z and just let the Y pass through. Okay, so let's change that back to texture. Plug that in. Uh, I'll have up on Gumroad with hopefully a link below, uh, a thing that you can download. Uh, it'll be a reorient mapping for texture mode. Also a uh, reorient, reorient mapping for um, point mode. Uh, I still need to rename those obviously from this, but if you use the texture node one, you can just drop it in, get rid of all this stuff, and now your mapping automatically works with just a little bit cleaner of a setup. Okay, so what are some other things that we can do with this? Uh, you can do different textures or different shapes. Uh, here I've thrown together a square and we need to go in here and in the mapping we need to reassign the sphere. But now if I move the sphere around, we now have a square that would act as the fall off. This doesn't have a gradient to it, but I'm sure you could figure something out. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, you can do, since it's working with the vector, you can actually use image textures. I'm going to turn this uh, sphere off so you can see through it. Okay, so you can still move it around. And so now this is using an image texture uh, in triplanar mode. This is another node that I'm working on and I'll release that uh, sometime soon. And then uh, now I've got an image texture of these um, these little rivets, and these are being mapped and used as the proximal shader. The last one that you can see here is a little person that I created uh, using just a bunch of gradient textures and scaling them and using a, another mapping node. So this mapping node has my sphere coordinates in it. And then these mapping nodes are moving where those spheres are at. My uniform scale is uh, adjusting its size and then it's an aspect ratio for like these uh, longer thin ones. This is not something that you probably ever want to do, but it is possible. So you can see it's in 3D space there. So you could have create your own little fall off. Uh, this is definitely not as powerful as Cinema, Cinema 4D's built-in proximal shader, but uh, it is fun to play with and that uh, you're kind of limited with what I figured out so far anyway to a radial fall off. Okay, let's look at some other projects that you could apply this proximal shader to. This is probably one of the first ones that I uh, put together and it is let me kill this displacement there we go okay so as you can see it is a bunch of spheres being attracted to a center one and they are that proximal shader is blending these colors together um, it is using Metaball, which normally you aren't going to be able to map on uh, textures to because the geometry is constantly changing. But if you're using this technique, it's actually referencing the uh, 
objects underneath of it. So it's one way to get this look. Uh, I'll open this one up. I'm not going to go into exactly how I built this because it's long. But you can see here, it's quite a node tree. Uh, this is all my reorienting. These, each one of these are mapped to a different sphere that is in the metal ball. This is controlling their scale. And then this is the spherical and then remapping what they look like. And then this is just a bunch of different mix RGBs. Uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in any of these, uh, ones that I'm showing for a full tutorial, let me know and I will try to put something together, but just a fair warning, it probably will be kind of long. So again, this is what this one looks like as they come together. You see here they start to blend together. Let's just go to the end. There you go. You get this nice kind of blend in here. So, okay, that's one. So here's one I think you guys will enjoy. Uh, this is using X particles. The emitter is set to the main sphere here. It's emitting from the surface. All the particles have XP part PP collisions on them. And then uh, there's an attractor to pull them back into it after uh, they get modified, the scale modifies and they push themselves off. So what you can see happening here is there's a reaction sphere, which is invisible, but it's there. Um, and as it gets closer, you can see you get this nice fall off as it morphs into the other uh, shader. So I believe this is the only way you would be able to do this with you know having half of a particle not changed over yet uh, you can do it with a full particle if you use um, this method which is using XP color to uh, change the particles as they get again as they get closer um, so you can see here and now uh, if you have it set fade between you can get kind of incremental steps, but you can't get that uh, kind of half particles. Okay, so let's take a look back at this. So the nice thing about this method is, and this is set up the exact same way the other one uh, is, uh, position is very important on this one because if you're not using the world position and you're using a generated position, then that's gonna be on a per particle basis and they all have their own UV map, which is identical. Uh, so you don't want to use that. You want to make sure it's in, uh, you're using the geometry and the position output vertex. Another cool thing you can do is use the XP OVD B measure. And we'll just throw that on. So the exact same thing, but now this is affecting the mesh. Uh, again, this is more probably one of the uh, one of the few ways I think you can do this with um, vertex maps, but vertex maps are just, in my opinion, horrendously slow. So this is a quick way. Again, you don't have the control over the shape as well as you could with the vertex map and a lot of other things. But in some situations, this is very useful and fun. Okay, so on to the uh, last one. So we have just a uh, modeled guy here. He's textures are set up correctly, hopefully. And the control on this is just a, there's a lot of things in here, but the mapping is controlled the exact same way, except that I have it, here it is, I have it set to uh, the aspect in the Y stretched so that I get a nice long kind of streak with that. 
So this, in this case, we're not only controlling the color, we're mixing, just like in the X particles, we're mixing a shader together, but we're also using that to drive um, displacement and using it to mix displacement. So if we get in nice and close, you can see this geometry is actually being displaced on his nose and that is all being controlled by this sphere. So if we rotate this, you can see that the texture rotates with it. Okay guys, I think that's it. Uh, like I said, if you want me to build out one of these projects or a couple of them, just let me know. Hope this helps and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks guys.